from Bitcoin, blockchain or distributed ledger technology to cryptocurrencies, tokens and initial coin offerings. It seems everyone involved has something to say, but can you really trust their advice? One man's had enough of weasel words and charlatans and is ready to give you impartial, independent analysis. With digestible blockchain bytes, ICO analysis and need-to-know news on cryptocurrencies, author, speaker, transparency and clarity advocate and award-winning software innovator, Barry James brings you Radio ICO. Well, welcome back to Blockchain Bytes on ICO Radio. And today we're going to turn the tables and I'm going to be interviewed for this show, but also for Blockchain Radio by Pierre Bourque from Canada, who uh, is the host there. So I hope you find it illuminating. I hope you enjoy it as we talk about token intelligence and uh, the red flags uh, of ICOs. And welcome back to Blockchain Radio. I'm Pierre Bork in Ottawa, Canada, joined today by the chief instigator and the voice of the popular podcast, ICO Radio, Barry James in London, England. Hello, Barry. Pierre, thank you. It's good to be with you. It's great to chat with you again. I always enjoy our conversations, uh, but it's been a while, this last one. So glad to have you on. I've been listening to you. I, I, uh, before we went on the air, I told you that this morning when I woke up, I turned on Blockchain Radio, and there you were, whispering in my ear. So just wonderful, <laughs> wonderful material to start the day. Look, um, for our listeners, tell us a bit about uh, the instigation. Since you're the chief instigator, tell us about the, what brought you to bring about ICO Radio. Okay, well, as you know, my background goes back a long way in tech. It's been um, tech my whole career and um, uh, mostly at the forefront of tech. Um, And, um, you know, over the last five or six years, we've been at the forefront of um, the crowdfunding world. Uh, and, um, And when ICOs burst on the scene, um, it was very, you know, very clear uh, that this was something new that people, and blockchain technology as well, something new that people would need to get their heads around. So um, uh, that's where blockchain radio comes from. It was, you know, we were casting around for the best way to help people through what is going to be a paradigm shift, you know, because with blockchain technology and, you know, there's so, so much that's new, it's a new, it is a new paradigm and, you know, it, it it changes what's possible. You know, there's so many new, new, new approaches, new ways, new things that can be done. Um, But it takes a while for people to, to get their heads around that. So we wanted to, to find a way, to make that, uh, to ease that process and to, um, I enjoy, you know, putting um, this sort of complex stuff into uh, more accessible language, hopefully. So um, uh, that's what we're, we're aiming to do. At the dawn of the uh, tech boom, 30 years or so ago, maybe 40, uh, the rise of venture capitalists and uh, they would look at technology developments and invest in them and and there was a, a growth that happened there. And then fast forward to the late 1990s, early 2000s, you had the dot-com boom followed quickly by the dot-com bust. Mm-hmm. And uh, monies were raised for uh, through a variety of, of means uh, via the community that was uh, gravitating towards the internet, either from the tech world or from Wall Street and, uh, and, uh, and other financial markets around the world. More recently, we've seen the rise of crowdfunding. So with, uh, with the blockchain world taking on a life of its own in, in an incredible fashion, with the type of speed and uh, intensity of activity that uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to show a direct parallel to those previous examples because things are happening much faster. So with respect to uh, the, the sense that the community itself at large can self-generate funds, can self-raise funds, dawn of the ICO, the initial coin offering. And yet it's still, it would seem to me, it's still the Wild West frontier. Yeah, I mean, uh, in many ways, uh, you know, where we are now is very reminiscent of where we were 20 years ago uh, with uh, 
the dawn of the internet when people were suddenly realizing that this was a game changer for everyone. Um, and in fact, I was um, chatting to someone on the phone earlier in the week and saying exactly that, you know, very reminiscent of 1998. And then an hour later, um, uh, talking to my good friend Thomas Power, who you've probably heard on one or more of these uh, of the ICO radio shows, uh, said exactly the same to me. And, and we are, this is genuinely a, um, a, you know, a change in the environment. Um, and, and actually, yes, it's, it is happening a lot faster. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's obvious that it is. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that, um, you know, back then it was corporate, it was investors, it was VCs that were uh, funding this. But now we have um, this new version of crowdfunding. Um, and obviously crowdfunding in itself over the last few years has been very powerful. And, and a major change to the way things can get going and be funded. Um, but now, you know, this whole, you know, ICOs are a whole new way and bringing a whole new level of funding um, based on, you know, different decision-making processes. You know, it's people being able to put, it's entrepreneurs and, and innovators being able to put the, um, the, the, the things together. Uh, and offer it to the world and the world can then decide so you know yeah it's absolutely accelerating things you're a you're a smart guy barry i've listened to a lot of your podcasts and uh we're, we're proud to have you on blockchain radio it's great content uh both from somebody who wants to learn's perspective and and from an insider's perspective who just wants a degree of knowledge of what's going on elsewhere within the, the ecosystem that they work uh, but you're also a great communicator and you could be doing what you do in a variety of other areas of society. What attracts you to the world of ICOs personally? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I've spent my career, um, you know, working uh, at, at the leading edge of tech and increasingly working with, with innovators and, you know, we've got a whole environment here which is absolutely filled with that. Um, and, you know, uh, so, you know, that and the fact that the, you know, ICO, um, ICOs are able to generate, you know, the funding uh, in new ways, uh, you know, to, to fuel that innovation is, is tremendously attractive. And so for you, it's, this is it. This is, to me, let, let me give you my example. Maybe you can, you can, uh, uh, you're drawing, um, you know, a direct link to that. Mine is when I saw what was going on in the blockchain space, it brought me right back to the early days of the internet. And in a way that I haven't seen in other specters of the activities that I've done, there's just so much optimism about how things can be better and how things can be changed and how much people can, uh, from a from a broad sense, uh, really do something with their lives, but also to to enrich themselves and and their colleagues who they work with, really to move the needles here. That's been twenty twenty five years coming here, uh, and yet uh, within all of this, there were a lot of people that look at that and uh, they might be taking advantage of that situation. They may be saying, "All right, everybody wants to do good here, but let's see if we can do a little bit a little bit of bad for ourselves here." So, I mean, how what percentage of the world of ICOs is uh, is you know scam like? Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of people talk about it being the kind of the wild the wild west frontier of our time, don't they? Um, yeah, let's come to that in a second. I mean, something you said something really interesting there, and you're absolutely right. Not only have we got this new technology, which open new ways of doing things that, that just weren't available to us before, and it m most most certainly does do that. But it's also triggered, and it's it's almost the other side of the uh, the crypto coin, if you like, um, a, a new kind of open mindedness and a willingness to think more radically and to go further in terms of rethinking ecosystems. Uh, and, and, and ways of doing things that then uh, at any time before, including in the, you know, the dot-com years. So that's, that's a really, you know, important point there, I believe. But uh, so this is the wild, wild, wild west frontier. W why am I here, I suppose, is the question. And I guess it's because it is the frontier. Um, 
And, you know, as you say, someone said that 80% of ICOs are scams. Well, um, I, I don't, I don't think that's true. I think, um, you know, I've had f- figures banded around even higher than that. Uh, but I actually think it's important to understand what's going on. Uh, I think there are scams. There's no doubt about that. There have been uh, some uh, some very definite scams. But, you know, the proportion of that is probably a tenth of that. Uh, so what about the rest? So, you know, uh, well... I think it's really important to understand the difference between fraud and failure, between a scam where someone goes out there to take advantage, to pull the wool over people's eyes, to get rich quick, um, to take the money and run. Uh, You've got no intention of of delivering, um, you know, either at the beginning or at some later stage in the project. That's a very different thing than... Um, you know, being able to, than than those who um, have every intention of doing, of delivering, uh, but, uh, you know, by its nature, innovation is risky. By its nature, startups are risky. You know, it's it's well known that a very high percentage, maybe 80% of startups uh, aren't going to survive. And that's not necessarily wrong. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't things that we, we can and should and, and, and do want to do about that in terms of bringing the skills, the contacts, the, uh, the experience to bear on uh, those, to, to push that, you know, the probability of success up, to pu- push the success rates up. Um, but those, that's not, it's not at all the same, the same thing. And I was saying earlier on that, um, you know, one way to think about it is to think about it rather like the Olympics, because when you're kind of going into that sort of, um, uh, you know, when you start going into a startup or running an ICO, uh, it really is rather like entering, you know, uh, that sort of environment. Uh, You know, it's like the Olympics. And in the Olympics, you know, only a small proportion of those who compete are going to go away with a medal by definition. You know, there's going to be a huge build-up. There's going to be a lot of resources, going to be a lot of time spent. But the vast majority of those who compete, even though they're the top level in their own country, are going to go away without a medal. Um, And is that wrong? No, it isn't. Um, From those people, you know, the standards will go up and and a lot will be learned, and maybe they'll be the ones who are earning the medals next time around. And this is, you know, often the case with startups and in business. Uh, but you know, uh, so not every startup is going to be, you know, a unicorn or, or, or even survive. Uh, and they may be, you know, a silver or a bronze <laughs> business overall. Um, but you know, it's important that we have this, and it's important that we support innovation because innovation is fundamentally about moving us forward and making the world a better place. Exactly. I, I should mention we're in conversation with Barry James, the voice of ICO Radio. I'm Pierre Bork, and this is Blockchain Radio. Barry, in listening to you, you're you're making a great differentiator here. You're in you're inviting us to understand that there are those that very few perhaps because there's a a tremendous amount of goodwill in the blockchain space but there are going to be a very few that are in there with bad will or ill will and they're going to find there are little ways to make uh, quick and dirty money and then disappear but then you've got those that are just trying something new they're trailblazing they're not following Mm -hmm. the tried and true they're trying to make something new and uh, within that uh, any sense of uh, opportunity that comes along with that entails potential risks on the level of concept on the levels of people involved in making it happen and on the levels of execution. You could have a great concept and great people, but if you're just terrible in execution, it's gonna fail. You could have a terrible concept with great people and great execution, and who knows, maybe it'll, maybe it'll succeed, but it, maybe the results will be mediocre. And then you could have a great, uh, great concept, terrible people, and who knows what's gonna happen with the execution. So there's, it's, it's a lot of moving parts, and it entails to me, it seems to me that you need to have visibility into that. You have to have transparency. You have to be able to understand that the people involved, what quality are they in relation to the quality of the uh, project that they're working on? And, and uh, 
Uh, and I believe in my understanding of uh, going to your website at tokenintelligence.io, you're, you're uh, trailblazing on your own here to help us get some great footings into that type of transparency and the knowledge base that's required to differentiate between the ones that are weak and the ones that are strong. Yeah, absolutely. And, and fundamentally, what we want to do is, uh, you know, help the ecosystem overall uh, to understand what's going on and help good ICOs the, and good founders and entrepreneurs, innovators who, you know, are working hard at this to, uh, to demonstrate their transparency and their willingness to be transparent, to work and improve on their clarity I and mean, it's incredibly difficult for uh, uh for founders very often in, in fact almost universally to clearly articulate to un, you know to their audience uh you know exactly what it is they're they're about and that's a that's a big and ongoing challenge for just about every ICO and and uh, and crowdfund and other organizations as well uh, so what we're doing is we're, you know, working on, t on a tool uh, and a change that, we'll, that we want to bring to the ecosystem that will bring some of the transparency that's been so powerful and effective in terms of uh, crowdfunding where uh, we know that it's transparency over and above, you know, uh, 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 everything else that has been, you know, uh, transformative in, in terms of, um, you know, supporting innovation without there being a big inrush, you know, in the early days, I, I used to be told all the time, you know, that there'll, there'll be one bad apple and then the whole thing, the whole show will be over. And that hasn't happened. And the reason it hasn't happened is because when you've got an environment which is, uh, not about disclosure, you know, disclosure is, you know, okay. Uh, but disclosure is really, you know, very limited. You, you're being asked to put out in public, you know, a minimum amount of information. Uh, with transparency in an environment like crowdfunding uh, and like ICOs, it's really much more about transparency. So where you're, you're being open to answer questions where you're being communicative where you're you know willing to engage in conversation and that those kind of conversations are in the open so that everyone can hear the right questions being asked and answered and and, and that's extraordinarily powerful along with identity and people being being clearly identified so what we're doing with token intelligence is we've created we've got you know, we're looking at the ICO, the whole ICO world. We're collecting data on all of the ICOs. Um, and we've got a, a really clear red, amber, green system where the ICOs that are being transparent, willing to be transparent, demonstrating their transparency can be seen clearly. Uh, and, and the others, you know, uh, can be flagged appropriately. Um, uh, and, and where we, you know, work with people to make sure that the people are who they say they are, that the team members are who the ICO says they are, uh, and so on. And, and, and so, um, you know, this is, this is a, uh, about making the ecosystem work better for those who, uh, who are willing to, to be transparent and, you know, uh, can, can use the help that we also can offer in terms of clarity and so on. It's kind of like applying peer pressure to peer projects uh, mm -hmm. because you're, you're turning to the community itself to, to self-validate, to self-regulate. Uh, as you're doing that and in peril to that, is it, uh, is it something that you see that legislators are, you know, you think about the Mount Gox debacle of uh, just a few short years ago, or more recently, and not yet, not that long ago, uh, the Ethereum DAO project that, uh, mm -hmm. that went up in, uh, in a degree of uh, self-immolation. Um, so, you know, the, the, the regulators, the, the, the government regulators around the world have taken notice of what's going on. They've clearly seen a lot of money, a lot of funds, a lot of value being 
poured into the space, but also being created as well. Just a tremendous amount of wealth that has been created in just a few short years. So it behooves the community to really get its act in order. And I applaud you, Barry, for all that you're doing, not only to talk about the world of ICOs, which is murky at best for those of us on the outside looking in, but with your uh, plans for token intelligence and what you're trying to do there to create that degree of clarity and transparency, which is so much uh, needed at this point. Where do you see government regulation coming in? Because it exists to a degree. It may not be fully applied to our circumstances today, but those that do the regulating love to do regulating. So they're looking for ways to regulate this world as well. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a development. Um, and, it, you know, people say, why are you against regulation? I'm actually not against regulation at all. Um, what I am against is, is dumb regulation as opposed to smart. Uh, and the right kind of regulation and you know um, it's not about the degree uh, and as my my good friend Simon Brickles who uh, was one of the founders of uh, the AIM stock market and the, and the plus stock market in the UK uh, has said you know every every activity starts out unregulated and then you kind of work out where you go from there um, and, and that's going to develop over time um, but actually, you know, we've got a huge opportunity here because um, we do have the, the transparency that does and can flow from the environment, the, the internet environment uh, that we're, we're in, where we can create those open flows and preserve those open flows of information, which is what we want to make sure happens because the alternatives are not good. Um, uh, but we also have blockchain technology itself, which is the most single most powerful tool alongside of transparency that any regulator could wish for or imagine because it gives the opportunity to make everything verifiable. Um, immutable records uh, mean that everything can be, can be verifiable. So we've, we've got the, you know, the tools, not just for a whole new world, an environment for you know to build trust uh, and to have clear verifiable paths for just about everything that we need them for uh, which changes things really markedly but also we've got you know the the tools and the the means to bring you know to, to revolutionize um, uh, the way things are, are policed controlled regulated uh, in fact um, at the 2020 fintech conference in london um i put up a, an, an equation there where where we you know uh we, which is very simple it's it's you know blockchain technology plus transparency equals smarter regulation and that's what we need uh barry talk to me about ico red flags what are they okay well um you know it, it's it's hard for people to um be on top of what's going on in ICOs uh, and there's you know a lack of um, uh, information uh, very often in you know it can be very confusing because every all the formats are different and so on um, so uh, you know it's, it's difficult for people to get their heads around so particularly so many ICOs um, a little bit easier when you're, they're in your sector and you can understand what they're going on, but, but even then it's difficult. But what we've learned and brought from the world of crowdfunding is there are a number of red flags that, you know, uh, can quickly and clearly indicate when something is not as it should be. So I, I alluded to one or two of them earlier on. So contactability, you know, when... Uh, when a project team or an ICO or for the matter a crowdfund go dark and you can't make contact with them, then um, it's pretty, you know, that's a pretty good indicator that things aren't, aren't right and as they should be. Uh, you know, you can expect and should expect uh, people who are being funded in this sort of way to be responsive to questions in an open environment. And if those things aren't happening, those, those, those are red flags straight away. Um, another one is, uh, and it's a bit more difficult for folks to detect, um, uh, you know, off, straight off the bat, but, you know, it's become a problem where people are being named as uh, team members 
without ever having been asked let alone recruited or become part of the team a good friend of mine who's a very very well known um you know figure in in the world of crowdfunding was uh you know saying he himself had been attached to uh you know just taking his picture and his details uh, uh and you know we're using his name um and one of the things that we're doing now is we're we're, we're helping icos uh, verify and make publicly verifiable their team who's involved uh and so on so that they can demonstrate that along with their transparency and you know that the, there's a whole load of metrics that uh, and tests we can now apply to the website and the, the the white paper and the other documents that are made available by a um by an ICO which indicate you know the level of completeness so one of the other you know uh, red flags which for example TechCrunch have, have identified quite rightly is that you know when there's no roadmap or when the white paper is incomplete or when there's a lack of key information that you would normally expect to be there that in itself is a red flag and we're going to be doing some really exciting uh, work going forward starting starting almost straight away we'll you know we'll be talking to we're already talking to quite a number of ICOs about this and we'll be talking to more um, as we go on but what we want to do is to bring this sunlight and fresh air as um, the famous Bridge Brandeis uh, Bridge Brandeis called it you know that uh, you know that's what transparency is it's sunlight and fresh air it's a disinfectant for the kind of malfeasance and and scamming and that sort of thing that, that can otherwise go on all right well let me ask you this uh, Barry let me put myself in in play here for a moment at least put myself in the in the place of a lot of these listeners who are uh, wondering whether or not uh, their idea for the, an ICO or even their ICOs are worthy of being brought to tokenintelligence.io in a conversation with you. You and I have had conversations about blockchain radio and potential applications for an ICO. Uh, I won't get into the details of that, but that's a conversation, that's a thought pattern that I've been having for quite a while. Mm. It's an area that I want to explore. For those who are listening to us right now who may be in the same boat as me, or maybe in a few feet, a few steps further, if I, if I may say, or maybe they've gone quite a distance down the road and they're thinking about all of the arguments that you've brought forward here today in our conversation. They're going, you know what? Barry makes a lot of sense here. And, and you do make a lot of sense. It, when is it too soon to get into a conversation with you? And when is it too late to get into a conversation with you? Okay, good questions. Um, so it's never too soon to pitch and, and to start refining your pitch and it's never too soon to start building your community you know getting people interested it's never too soon to start looking and building relationships with you know the key people who've got the the skills or the experience the contacts and so on that are going to help form uh, and underpin uh, your your venture your campaign your ico so those are the things that you can do straight away um yeah by all means come come to us at token intelligence it's token intelligence.io um and and ask those questions um you know but what we're planning to do uh is to we'll be bringing new tools and and a whole new community as well um uh, we'll be opening this up quite soon now uh, to enable you to more easily connect with the, the kinds of people and the key people that you're going to need to succeed, to, uh, to take an ICO forward uh, uh, and so on. So, so yeah, uh, you know, uh, you can come straight right now to, uh, there's a pre-reg link on the front page. In fact, by the time you're listening to this, it, it may be a, a registration link. Uh, and, 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 and come and, and ask questions and uh, make contact. And let me uh, add this and, and ask you this, Barry. If I'm an investor in ICOs, and supposing I've been investing in ICOs for the last year, I made a bundle, uh, maybe I've lost a, a few bundles along the way as, as the ebb and flow of the various prices have gone up and down. 
But now I'm hearing about this idea of clarity and uh, transparency to a much greater degree of plausibility and in a much de greater degree of specificity to my own circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recommend to investors to encourage the ICOs they're looking at and the people they're having conversations with within those ICOs to get in touch with you as well? In other words, not just the issuers of the ICOs, perhaps myself being in that boat, but as well the investors in ICOs applying pressure on the issuers of ICOs to, to go to, move, to make that move towards that degree of transparency uh, and clarity that, uh, that you're trying to, uh, to provide as a platform at Token Intelligence. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, um, you know, we see this as something that is going to benefit everyone involved in the ecosystem. That's the intent. Um, and, and I think that, you know, um, it, it's uh, while we, you know, we, we won't be and we don't intend to be giving investment advice. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, knowing, you know, being able to check out quickly whether a potential ICO um, you know, has problems, has, has manifest problems in order to move on to the ones that, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, are worthy of, of that, uh, time and attention is, is a benefit in itself. Uh, but yeah, we'd, we'd very much like, uh, investors to do that and channel people in our direction. All right, Barry, uh, just in closing this out, are there any, uh, comments or any thoughts that we haven't touched on yet that you want to make sure you get out before we close out our conversation today so um first of all i'd like to thank you pierre for for, for the opportunity to talk about this as you know we're really excited uh you know that this is going to be part of uh us helping to bring a change to the ecosystem in a really positive way that supports innovations so you know um, yeah, you, you, everyone out there, you, I'm sure you've got the tokenintelligence.io. Uh, that's the URL. Please come and join us, and um, uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you, both questions and everything else. Thank you. Barry, thank you so much. Barry James, the chief instigator of ICO Radio and Token Intelligence. Uh, I'll give you those domain names because they're very much worthwhile checking out, icoraid, R-A-D, dot I-O, so ICO Radio, and tokenintelligence.io. Barry James, thanks for joining us on Blockchain Radio this afternoon. Pierre, thank you so much. I'm Pierre Bork. You're listening to Blockchain Radio. ICO Radio was brought to you by author, speaker, transparency and clarity advocate, and award-winning software innovator, Barry James. Get in touch with the program. Put yourself or someone else forward as a guest. Visit iconewsdesk.com. And if you've enjoyed the show, please leave a review. And don't forget to subscribe to get your next insights and interviews from the ICO Radio Podcast.